If you do a search on how to improve the range as well as the penetration of the DJI FPV goggle system, information you find are mostly on these expensive patch antennas or stubby antennas. But do you really need them? Is there an alternative that is cheaper and effective? That's the question I'm trying to answer in this video. Just a little bit on the science of it, there's a transmitter and there's a receiver. To use a simple analogy, let's look at the home Wi-Fi system. If the signal is weak, which will you fix? The Wi-Fi router or the receiver on each of your devices? So the question is, if I have limited budget, which should I spend on to get the biggest improvement in the imagery? Bingo, you're right. It's the transmission. Why have weak transmissions and then spend money on those patches, amplifying those weak signals received? And for very practical reasons, most of us fly all over the place, to our left, to our right, behind us, in front of us. For patch antennas, in order to benefit from the amplification from the signals it receives, you need to keep the drone in front of you. It's useful if you are flying all the way out and range is your concern. However, if you are zipping all over the place, imagine trying to keep your antennas locked into your drone's location by rotating your head left to right, left to right. That doesn't sound very appealing to me. Okay, to cut the long story short, this is the conclusion. By replacing the stock antenna with a long-range antenna at the transmission, it's going to improve performance significantly. And from the real-world test that I did, I'm not sure if more expensive antennas make a difference. Watch on if you want to see the proof. These are my quads. They are set up pretty much the same except for the antennas. For the test, this was where I was standing. Three things that we'll be paying attention to are first, the quality of the image, secondly, the delay timing, and third, the bit rate. Between where I was standing and where the drone was flying to was vegetation, a hill in between, as well as stone bridge structures. The first flight footage came from using stock antennas. The usual bit rate is about 50 and the delay is about 25 milliseconds. In between the two stone bridges, you can start to see the drop in bit rate, increase in delay timing, and this is the point whereby you start to see some pixelation happening in the image. This is the point whereby the image started getting sluggish. Let's do it again. We'll be doing a frame hold at almost the same point and compare it against two other antennas. Due to the low bit rate, image quality has degraded quite a bit. All right. Let's pull out. Once there's enough elevation to have more or less a line of sight from where I was, you notice that both the bit rate and the delay has resumed back to normal. In the next flight test, the TBS long range antenna was used. And at the point where the stock antenna started showing lower bit rate and higher delay time, TBS long range antenna was holding pretty well. And this is the frame hold point. We take note that the bit rate has dropped and the delay time has increased, but it resumed back to almost near normal level pretty quickly. And you notice that the picture quality did not degrade as much as the stock antenna. So changing to the long range antenna definitely increased the penetration power of the signals and thus the image quality was better. The final run was done with the Maple long range antenna. It cost about one third the price of the TBS and it produced almost identical results. And I thought the image quality is actually a little bit better. So that gave me confidence to go a bit slower and lower to see if the delay is going to make flying uncomfortable, but it was okay. And this thing costs one third, if not half as much as the expensive antenna. 
So with the stock antenna, image quality definitely took a hit. There was too much delay and the images were jerky. With TBS long range antenna, penetration power was definitely better. There was less delay as well as images were sharper. What came as most surprising was the Maple long range antenna. I don't need to say anything. I think the image speaks for itself. So with this discovery, I have since changed all my quads to this long range antenna. It is possible that other long range antennas that are cheap work as well. Personally, I did not change the stock antennas that came with my DJI goggles. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.